We're in uh, Memheim and Bays, 45B, for about, a little less than halfway down the page, or about halfway down the page. Uh, first word in line is Minohanimili, Mem Nun Hey Mem. Okay, so we saw the mission that the Nazir takes his hair and burns it underneath the fire of his of his carbon. We spoke about it. it's mainly the carbon shlomim. And we had a debate if somebody who is so we said no, ideally a Nazir is going to bring his carbonas into the base of Mekdash. But potentially, if he lives outside of Arit Yisrael, he might choose to send money and not show up at all. And then he'll cut his hair outside of the base of Mekdash, wherever he lives in you know Europe or Middle, Middle East, wherever he might be. Now, um, according to according to her mayor, the only one so so he does he um, everybody burns and under, uh, burns their hair except for somebody who's tummy and not in Israel. According to the Rabbanon, it's only it's mm -hmm. only somebody who's tar, not somebody who's tummy. Okay, we also saw that uh, not only do you take the hair and burn it, but you also take some of the of the of the carbon, the right there, the gravy, and you burn it as well. Obviously, that's only going to be in the temple because otherwise, there'd be no way to bring the sacrifice there. Okay, so Mars is not immediately. How do we know <clears throat> that you burn you burn some of the sacrifice? So Amarova Rova says Amar the pasuk teaches Asher Tachas Zeva Hashlom. You take the hair and you put it tachas hashlomim, underneath the, the sacrifice of the shlom. But it could also be right as mizivchai, mm -hmm. the zevach should be, yetachtav should be underneath it. Meaning that some of the sacrifice is also burnt on, on, under, <coughs> under it in the fire. So in other words, you take some of the gravy and you burn it in the fire that's it's underneath itself. Okay. If you if you uh, burn his hair underneath the pot of the chatos, which obviously would be inside the base of Mekdash, like we said yesterday, the chatos is prepared in the Azara, as opposed to the shlomim, which is prepared outside the Azara. So let's say they took his hair and they put it underneath the fire of the chatos. You fulfill the obligation. My time. How do we know? On my cross, the pasuk says, Zevach. It says you, you put it underneath the Zevach HaShlomim. Zevach is sort of a generic word for sacrifice. And Shlom is specific. So, so, so Zevach comes to include Shlom. <clears throat> uh, comes to include Chathas, I'm sorry. It's a Chathas for Asham. Or, or an Asham in the case of a Nazar Tomei. It brings, instead of a Chathas and a Shlom, it brings a Chathas and an Asham. <clears throat> okay. So the Gemara says, well, I think the high Zevach may write them. We've already said that this zevach tells me that the zevach needs to be underneath the pot. One second. Yeah. Mkain le makra me writev. So Morris says Morris is right. If it was just coming to say. One second. If if the Torah just wants to teach us that the writev, the gravy needs to be needs to be in the fire, it could have used the word for gravy writev. Why did it use the word zevach? And to tell me that, 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 that even if he, bring, if, if he puts his hair underneath the sacrifice of the shlomim and the, of the chadas and the asham, he fulfills his obligation. Okay. Maybe, it's come, maybe the only thing it's telling me is that you can burn his hair underneath the chadas and the asham, but not, it, it's not telling me that, that you're obligated to to uh, take the gravy and put it underneath the carbon. How do I know that? So the Mara says, the aim of cool chadis washum dasa and can lay shlomim the zevach. It should say, it say you put it underneath the shlomim and the zevach. My zevach shlomim. Why is, is zevach before shlomim? The main mitzvah is shlomim, right? It said you, you you cut the guys here outside in the in, in the lishkas hanazirim. In the chamber with an azirim cut their hair, and that is outside the azara, outside the temple courtyard. And the and, and we know in this way you don't have to carry the hair. You cut his hair and you immediately put it underneath the pot. 
So if it's if it was coming to tell me that I can put it underneath the part of Shlom and also the part of Chatmas and Oshem, it should have said the first one, which is most important, which is Shlomim, and it should have said Shlomim v'zevach. Lema Shlom v'zevach. My zevach Shlomim. Why is it that zevach is before Shlomim? Shmami no tardi. That the word zevach is telling me two things. First of all, that you can put the here underneath the part of Chatmas and Oshem, and and also you take some of the gravy and you burn it. Tana Rabbanon. The rabbi is taught takol in Mishal and Tachas Hadud. Uh, every nazir would put his hair on in a fire, <laughs> except for a, a uh, nazir who became Tomei, who sent his carbonates to Israel, but he remains outside of Israel. It doesn't really have to be outside of Israel. Presumably, it would be, it would be outside of Jerusalem. Why? His hair is buried. What is the source to say his hair is buried? Tysus does not know. Divra Meir, it's the opinion of a mayor. Yehudai Meir, to Hiram, Kan Bukan Hayimashachan. A Nazar who was Tahar would, would have his hair burnt either way. Tameyan, Kan Bukan, Loy Hayimashachan. People who are Tameyan do not have their hair burnt. The rabbi said the only one that would burn his hair was a tohar in the base of Mikdash, because that's the proper way to complete your naziris, and then therefore you can burn it underneath the fire. Okay, we continue discussing how to uh, finish up a naziris. Give me a second. If he was cooking the shlomim, a shalkan, or a shalak is sort of like what, what's done to venison. It's it's a super long cooking. It's a, it's a it's more than just that you're cooking the food and you know, like making it to do twelve. It's you're cooking for a very long period of time. So either way, okay. So, so part of the the conclusion of the zeros is a process called tenufa. Tanufa is you take the uh, the uh, the um, the zroy b'shelem and ayel, so the the ayel is going to be the, the one that's a shlomim. You take the zroy b'shelo, the cooked. Um, I'm not sure I actually have that right. Anybody remember? Yes. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. So he takes the so the shlomim was an ayel. That's a uh, grown. Uh, a, a, a mature, uh, not grown, not a mature. Okay, it's it's a, a one year old female or older. I think, it's one, I think it's one to two years old, and he takes the zroya. The zroya is the hand that that's the front leg. Together with, remember the we spoke in the past. The nazar brings chalos and matzos. Chalos obviously is chametz. Matza is is matza. It's not chametz. Okay, so what does he do? Is he takes the kind takes the, the arm, the the leg of the the arm of the um of the shlomim, the chalas matzah achas menasal, and one loaf of bread, the rokik matzah achas, and one matzah, the noisin al kapi hanazer. He puts it in the hands of the nazar. The nazar stretches out his hands. The nazar puts on two breads, one's chametz, one's matzah, plus a uh, plus the carbon. And what do they do together? They lift it up. Menifa, they lift it up. The achakak. Once they do the tenufa, putter hanazer lishnis yain uli tamer lemeisim. Once this step is complete, the nozer is allowed to become tame or drink wine. This talked about unleavened loaves and one unleavened wafers. You talked about oh, okay. Was... Interesting. Okay. So it's a, they're both matzah then. Yeah. One, one's a bread and one's a cracker. Okay. Important. Um, one second. Okay. Okay. Uh, Shimon, I'm Shimon says, keep a nuzagol of echon and adomim, hutu nozer shes viyayin le tamil mason. Shimon says once any or any carbon has the avoid of zrika, the blood is poured in the base uh, on the on the uh, mizbeach, 
So at that point, the um, um, the nozer is permitted to become tame or to drink wine. Okay. Toner of Aron. Toner of Aron. We learned as follows. So it's interesting. There's two, there's two psukim. If you have the fancy Gemara, so you can see them on the sides. Um, one Mishnah basically says the, the Kayin does Tanufa and then the Nozer drinks wine. And the other one says that first the Kayin cuts his hair and then he does Tanufa. I'm sorry, first the Nozer cuts his hair and then the Kayin does Tanufa. Tanufa means lifting this package, oh. the, 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 the hand of the ram and the two breads. So again, so the, sec, the first Pasuk says the Kayin does Tanufa after he cuts his hair. And the next Pasuk says, they do the Tanufa and then he drinks, his, then, then he drinks, then he can drink wine. So Tanur Abonav, Acha Yishtai Nozer B'yayin, Acha Hamayis Tekula. They look at the second, this first opinion looks at the second verse, Diver Rebbe Yezer, this opinion of Rebbe Yezer. So he looks at the second verse, he says, when are you allowed to, when are you allowed to drink wine after you do Tanufa? What does that mean, after Tanufa? It means after everything, not just Tanufa. It means after all the complete process of all the kabbalas and you lift up this tanufa package, then then you can drink wine. The chachamim I remember, but the rabbi's opinion is similar to Rav Shimon. Achar ma'isa yichidi, even after one action, meaning one the zrik of one carbon that suffices. Second, yeah. And why is this? My Tamayr Rabbanon, what's the reason of the Rabbanon? Siv hacha ba'ashli, acha yishta hanozer yayin. Siv hacha some acha raskalcha is nizri. Ma hacha some acha ma'isi chidi, acha ma'isi chidi. It says, it says the Kayin prepares the Tanufa after he cuts his hair. Now, now, what, what's the requirement to cut his hair? What does he need to do to be able to cut his hair? Zerika of one carbon. You put the blood of the, on the altar of one carbon, one sacrifice, then you can do, then you can cut his hair. So just like when the terrorist says Achar as 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 Nizri, after he cuts his hair, and that means after after what after one carbon, one zrika does he cut his hair? Then Achar the Achar Yishta Nazir Yain doesn't mean after the Tanufa, which is after the cutting of the hair, which is after the carbon. What it means is it means just like just like Tagalach, just like cutting his hair happens after zrika. Drinking wine is is in the same category. Okay. 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 Maybe, maybe the, by nausea, by drinking wine, because it says it after Tanufa, you should have to have at least two two items. Maybe it should have to be Zerika of one carbon plus Tagalakas, plus cutting his hair. So Mara says, if that's the case, what's the purpose of comparing it to, in other words, why is drinking wine compared to cutting hair if you have to wait for multiple things? The, the comparison is to tell you that you only need to wait for one thing, and that is Zerika of one carbon. Okay, Amarav. It's an, a bit of a, an interesting Gemara here. A little, uh, this, Gemara has two versions. The second version is uh, uber convoluted, and it, mm. according to Tesla, so is the first. Okay, Amrav Tanufa, Benozer uh, Amrav Rav says Tanufa Benozer Ma'akevas. Tanufa is a requirement for Nazar. You need to do Nazar. Meaning, if you don't do Nazar, you're not you don't do Tanufa. Tanufa again is lifting up the package. Then you cannot cut your hair, or you can't drink wine, or become tummy. Uh, one second, Ma'akevas. Gemara says Alibe Demar. According to which opinion? If you're if you're going with the opinion of the rabbis, if the rabbis say that even cutting your hair is not necessary to be able to drink wine, then certainly tanufa lifting up lifting up the package should certainly not be ma'akif. Shouldn't it certainly should not be a requirement? Elowad, it must be. According to the opinion of Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Eliezer says you need to do everything. Sigmar says, well, pshita, obviously, you need to do all the different steps. In order for a nazar to drink wine or become tamei, he needs to complete all the mitzvahs of of ending naziris, including including them is the mitzvah of tanufa. 
So the Gemara says, I would have thought. Since, since as it pertains to Kapora, Tanufa is not a requirement. One second. Meaning that if somebody did not do Tanufa, it's considered he, he, he fulfills the obligation, but he, he didn't do the mitzvah Tanufa. It's not necessarily a requirement. So I would think, um, it, let me explain this. In other words, if somebody didn't do Tanufa, he, he, um, he's, he's still, he's still, the carbonates are still valid. He doesn't invalidate the sacrifices. It's not a critical component of the sacrifice. And therefore, I would think that maybe it wouldn't, it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't serve as an obstacle to the Nazir finishing his Naziris. And, and therefore, the opinion of Rav is that no, according to Rabbi Lazar, it does serve as an obstacle to finish his Naziris. It is a requirement. Okay. <clears throat> So, the, so the, 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 therefore, Rav is saying that no, it, it is a necessary component of concluding the Naziris. Okay. Even though it's not a necessary component of the sacrifices. In other words, if you have a sacrifice that has an obligation of Tnufo and you don't do the Tnufo, the sacrifice still works. But that doesn't, but the, it, it's not because of the sacrifice requires the Tnufo, it's because the Nazir requires the Tnufo. Okay, so here's a little bit of the complicated part. I... Okay, so what, so, okay, so, yeah. so there's two things here. So first of all, you're right. Let's, in other words, in other words, even if, even if you didn't do Tunfa, then I guess he waits around, can't drink wine until he does it. Or alternatively, the, the, um, the, the stuff he was supposed to do Tunfa on was destroyed, disappeared or vanished or became tummy, whatever you choose. In that case, he might be stuck because he can't bring a carbon because he's already he's already accomplished what is carbonis right. the purpose of his carbonis in other words he's gotten a what we call a caparo the, the carbonis have been validated so he can't bring a carbon because he doesn't need to bring a carbon but he, he he's still stuck as an ozer he can't drink wine because he never did a tunufa and we'll see that might be we'll get to it in a moment we get to a similar situation okay so now we're talking about tunufa being ma'akif tunufa is a requirement is it true that Tnufa is a requirement? What happens? What's the requirement to do Tnufa? What's the basic requirement? You need to have hands. What happens if somebody doesn't have hands? But Tanya, we learned, this is the rule of the Nazar, whether he has hands or whether he doesn't have hands. Evidently, if somebody doesn't have hands, then they complete their Naziris without Tnufa. And just like a person without hands can complete his nazirus without tunufa, then the Gemara presumes a person with hands also should be able to complete his uh, nazirus without tunufa. So why is it a requirement? Okay, now what's the fundamental logic here? He doesn't bring a sacrifice. The Gemara's question is valid only because it's considered legitimate to compare somebody without hands to somebody with hands. Is that a legitimate comparison? Someone else could cut his hair. <clears throat> what? Someone else could cut his hair. He doesn't have to do it. Sure. No, no, no. Somebody, somebody who has hands. So somebody who doesn't have hands. Right. So we're saying that if somebody has hands mm -hmm. to, to, with regard to Tanufa, we're not talking about cutting hair. Okay. Oh. So you can't pick it up if you, you don't have hands. Up, well, right. you could pick it up, but 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 maybe maybe you could. someone can't. Pick but it up. Um, someone can't pick it up. For right. Him. Right. Right. So in other words, we're saying that because somebody with some, because somebody without hands is exempt from Tanufa, mm -hmm. therefore somebody with hands, Tanufa isn't a requirement. Is, is that a logical conclusion? So the Gemara says it's not clear. In other words, that's the, that, that's the proposition of the question. But we have a similar question. This is a very relevant one. Uh, right? Somebody asked this question in the past. I don't remember who it was. Um, I never knew it was Donna. I'm not sure. What happens if a nozer doesn't have hair? He's bald. So what does he do? So there's going to be a number of ways to read this price. Let's try to read it closely. So are we going to say that, that cutting hair is not a requirement of completing Naziris either? 
because we find that somebody without hair can't obviously cut his hair. Or maybe he could, we'll see in a moment. Vatanya we learned. Nazar Mimurat, if you have a Nazar who has no hair. Meshamayim or Meshamayim says, Ain it Tzarech Lahaber Tyro Roshe. He does not, he is not required to, to run a razor over his head. Ubez Hillayim or Tzarech Lahaber Tyro Roshe. He does, he is required to run a razor over his head. So now it's not so clear. Okay. What does Meshamayim mean you don't have to? V'am Ravina, Ravina explains, My Ain it Tzarech Lahaber Meshamayim, Ain it Tzarech, Ain le Takano. There's no solution. Meaning, he's stuck. He's stuck. This guy can never end his nazirus. And according to Beis Hill, Beis Hill says you, you need to you need to run a razor on his head. It doesn't mean you have to run a razor over his bald head, of course not. But uh, but what Beis Hill says you're exempt. Hal Beis Hill yesh let Okay. Now, therefore the the. What we see from here is that the comparison between somebody who has hair and somebody who doesn't have hair is not is not is not that what the the rule of law of someone who doesn't have hair is not necessarily the same as the rule of law of someone who does have hair, and therefore the same should be true with regard to tanufa with hands. Just because somebody who doesn't have hands is exempt from tanufa doesn't mean that somebody with hands, um, with somebody with hands is um, is. Yeah. Is not tanufa wouldn't be a wouldn't be a certain requirement to to end his nazirus. The same as the yavam without a foot. What do we say about the yavam doesn't have a foot? I think we said. What about his shoe? Right, right. There's a whole discussion. I mean, ultimately, kind of anything that is used as a shoe is is good. You know, if he's got a prosthetic foot mm, or whatever. Right, right, but, right. But I mean, it's, it's, it's the same discussion. Yeah, yeah. You have this discussion in a bunch of places. It's yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah, the Gemara, the Gemara, the the classical case of this is is uh, if you have a the rabbis taught that one log of oil is able to mix up to one saw of wheat, but you don't actually have to mix the oil with the wheat, except that if you bring a mincha that's greater than than I think it's sixty saw, if it's greater than sixty saw, you need to bring a second jug of oil because you need to be able to mix it. So you have him, yeah, bring, you're bringing flour, you're bringing oil, you don't need to mix the flour and the oil, but you need to be able to mix it. Yeah, mm-hmm. so so sort of the idea here is, is that that if you're able to, in, in this version it would be a little bit different, it would be if you're able to, if you're able to do tenufa, you're required to do tenufa. If you're unable, incapable, mm-hmm. then we give you a pass. And that's what the Pesach is telling me. Okay, and this is the opinion behind Udra Pidos. Okay, in this, so in this version, so it, basically there's no question on, on Rav. The, the presumption to equate somebody without hands to somebody with hands with regard to the requirement to do Tnufa is not a valid one. And therefore, Rav's opinion makes sense. And this would, this would work very well with Rav Pidos. What did Rav Pidos say? The Amr Rav Pidos, B'Sham of Rav Yezer, Amr Dov Rechem. B'Sham of Rav Yezer said the same thing. My rebel Yezer, what, what rebel Yezer? The time we learned, Ain't like Boyan Yad Varegel, Ain't like Tahar Elamis. Rebel Yezer says if somebody, somebody's a Mitzayra, as part of the purification process of a Mitzayra, in order for a Mitzayra to enter the base of Mikdash, he needs to have the blood put on him, on his, on his foot and his hands. What happens is he doesn't have a foot in his hands. So Rebel Yezer says this Mitzayra is never able to go into the temple. He can purify himself to enter the camp, but not to go into the base of Mikdash. Rav Shimon says you put it on the on the, the closest spot wherever he his um what's it called uh no the 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 stump wherever yeah the, the last the last spot before it was cut off um the the, the, the closest amputated amp, location of amputation yeah okay that's where you put it so that's the opinion of of Rabbi Yezer. Say you can put it on the left side instead of typically you have to do it on the right side. Listen up, okay. Now, th- and this would go with very well with the opinion of Ishamai. Ishamai says that if you have here, you're obligated to cut your hair, and if you don't have here, then you can't. Uh, then, then um, if you don't have here, then you build, your naziris never ends. So, in a certain sense, here, Rabbi Yezer actually holds, according to Ishamai, that you're always required to do tenufa, and if you can't do tenufa, you're not. A, then, then you can't end your Naziris. 
Lishnachrino, a second version of the same Gemara. Amri law, some say, Amarav, Tnufa benazer ma'akavis. Tnufa is a requirement for nazer. So Gemara asks, Aliba deman, according to which opinion? Ilema Aliba de Rebel Yezer, if you say it's the opinion of Rebel Yezer, Shita, this would seem to be obvious. Ha'am Rebel Yezer, achar ma'isim kulam. Rebel Yezer says, it's uh, that you need to do all the different stages of Naziras to end the Naziras, and that would include Tnufa. It must be, it's the opinion of the rabbis. And the Gemara says, The Gemara says, if, if, uh, in order to drink wine, you don't even have to cut your hair. All you need to do is bring one sacrifice. So then, why do you need to do tnufa? So would, would it seem logical that you would that you would have to that you'd have to do tnufa? So the Gemara says, hold on a second. So you mean to say that you don't have to do tnufa? Is right? In other words, the Gemara is trying to say that 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 uh, Rava fits with the Rabbanon's opinion, the rabbi's opinion. Right? Now the question the Gemara says doesn't fit, right? If the only thing you need to cut your hair is one carbon, the only thing you need to you, the only thing you should need to drink wine is equivalent. Why would you be required to do tnufa? Okay, fine. Good question. So, so what must be that it must be that therefore you're not required to, to, to do tnufa? In other words, okay, fine. So let's presume the question's correct. So tnufa is not a requirement for drinking wine. Okay. Does that make sense? Well, Akfa. Okay, so you, so the, from this question, you want to prove to me that you don't need to do tnufa. Is that does that make sense? Vatanya, we learned Zar is Taurus and Ozer. This is the this is the rule of Nazar, whether Nazar has hands or whether he doesn't have he does not have hands. One second. One second. Okay, okay. so the Gemara is saying whether the Nazar has hands or whether it doesn't have hands. So yes, before we were saying that this means that you could end your Naziris whether you have hands or not. And now the Gemara presumes actually the opposite. Whether you have hands, whether you don't have hands, you're required to do Tnufa. So Gemara says, hold on, does that make any sense? When we compare it to... Okay, so in other words, the Gemara is saying that it would seem that a Nazar is required to do, to do Tnufa. Whether he does or doesn't have hands, meaning he, if he can't do tnufa, then he can't do tnufa and he can't end his naziris. This that we learn zeris teres and azar ben sheyesh leisar ben sheein leisar pachanami de ma'akvul. We learn that a noz, that whether a person has hair or doesn't have hair pachanami de ma'akvul. Are we going to say that you're required to cut your hair? Vatanya we learned nazar memorat. If you have a nazar who's bald, but shami yomam ain't it tzarich lahaver taro roish v'tzalim tzarich lahaver. There's a machleg is b'shami b'shil whether whether a nazir has to, um, ha, whether whether someone who's bald has to cut his hair or not. Okay, presumably according to b'shil. According to b'shil, that you need to you need to run it, run a razor over his hair. If if you presume it like the previous gemara, that means he's exempt from cutting his hair. If he's exempt from cutting his hair, that means that if you could be a nazir, whether or not you have hair. That means that actually here is cutting here is not a requirement. And similarly, if you're a nazir without hands, you should not have to uh, bring a tnufa. And therefore, it would, perfect, it would make perfect logical sense to say that tnufa is not a requirement. So Mara says, no, 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 no. Absolutely, to the contrary. If a nazir doesn't have hair, he can't end his naziris, even according to Basil. When Basil says you need to run a razor over his hair, what Basil is saying is you can't, and therefore you remain a nazir forever. And therefore, the Torah says you're a nazir whether or not you have hair, it means that in both cases, you, you need to cut your hair in order to end this naziris. And if you can't, you can't, and you'll always remain a nazir. And therefore, the same is true of a, of a nazir without hands. When the Torah says you're a nazir whether or not you have hands. It means in both cases, you're required to do tnufo, whether or not you have hands. So, Amr Bavina, 
And this version of the Gemara Rabbi Hill actually says you need to run a razor over his hair, meaning, and you can't. And therefore, therefore, there's no solution. Okay. However, Lebeshama Yeshletakana. Lebeshama says you don't need to. Lebeshama actually is a lenient one. Lebeshama says you can go, you can go walk without cutting your hair. It still says you do need to cut your hair and you can't, and therefore you're stuck. And in this version, Upligadur of Pedos. In this version, Rav Pedos clearly disagrees with Rav Eliezer. In other words, because in this version, Beshamai actually says there is a simple solution. Beshamai holds that, that if one does not have hair, he's not required to, he's not required to cut his hair. He can end his hair without cutting his hair. However, Rebbe Eliezer says that if you don't have hands, but in, in the case of Mitzayra, that you will always be a Mitzayra at some level. You can come into the camp, you can come into the Temple Mount. So according to the second version, Rebbe Eliezer and Beshamai are clearly disagreeing. Okay, together. Um, okay, let, 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 let's re just review briefly, and then we'll see what we're holding time wise. Okay. Okay. Uh, we started off discussing how a nazir, a, a nazir who, uh, if somebody's concluding his nazirus, he cuts his hair, he puts it underneath the pot. We had a debate: what happens if he's not in the temple, and or if he's tummy. And that was sort of a three-way debate. This is a separate discussion. We said that if the Nazar took his hair and put it underneath the, the pot of, of, of the Oshem or the Chathos, which would be done in the, in the temple courtyard itself, as opposed to the Nazar cutting his hair, which is done in the Lishkas HaNazirim, the chamber of Nazirim, which is outside the temple courtyard. It's, it's an adjunct building. Um, um, that, that would suffice. And uh, additionally, um, wait a second. Here. Um, additionally, yeah, just to here. Second. Second. One second. Um, okay, and, and oh, and, and also the gravy has to be put underneath the pot of the shlom. Okay, uh, that took that takes care of that. Okay, then we saw the idea of tenufa. You take the arm of the shlomim along with the two types of breads that both are both of which are matzah, and you lift them up. Um, we have a machlekes whether that tenufa is what permits the kain to drink wine. Or it is it is bringing one of the carbonates. That's the opinion of Shimon and the opinion of the Rabban. And we can so the opinion of Rabbiazar, you need to do everything. The opinion of the Rabban, you only need to do one thing that depends on whether you compare uh, drinking wine to cutting hair. If you compare them, then cutting hair, the only thing that's necessary is one carbon to be brought. Okay. And then we saw this interesting Gemara with regard to uh, Tnufa by Nazar being a requirement. So the Gemara. In it, according to the first version of the Gemara, it's in the opinion of Rabbi Yezer. Even though Rabbi Yezer requires everything to be done, we would think that maybe Rabbi Yezer would say that since Tanufa is sort of not necessary for the carbon, right? A carbon is validated even without Tanufa. So therefore, it should, Tanufa shouldn't be a requirement for Nazar either. And the, the uh, Rav, is, Rav, is, Rav, I'm sorry, Rav is telling you that even according to, that according to Rabbi Yezer, even Tanufa is a requirement for Nazar. Then the Gemara tries to compare it to somebody without hands, and the Gemara says that the comparison is not valid. And therefore, the conclusion is that according to Rabbi Yezer, somebody without hands is stuck, and that's the same opinion as Bishamai with regard to somebody who is bald. In the second version of the Gemara, the Gemara flips it and says, Tanufa is a requirement according to the Rabbanon, and therefore somebody without hands cannot end his Naziris, and somebody without hair cannot end his Naziris according to Base Hill. And therefore, that obviously disagrees with the opinion of Rabbi Pidas that says that Beishamai implies that, that Beishamai is the one that says he cannot end his service. Okay. Yes, oh. well, tomorrow at 8 10. Okay. That is the clock of changing the clock. Changing after that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, Saturday night.
Yeah. Okay. Has it changed back this week? How did 